Welcome back to Nick Lane's Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classic. This episode 547, double shot number 443. Two Batman trades. First up, it is Batman Beyond Volume 2 Rise of the Demon. Excuse me. Collecting issues 6 to 12 of Batman Beyond. Written by Dan Jorgens, not worked by Bernard Chang. Though the whole storyline Rise of the Demon is up until the la up until the second to last issue because the last issue, let's talk about this one first. The last issue is well Batgirl Beyond shows up at a place called Crown Point, of course Commissioner Gordon, who is actually Barbara Gordon at this point, gets kidnapped and she and Max uh Terry's uh lady uh friend who's also a girl. Yeah, there's nothing romantic between two of these two. They go and they rescue Barbara Gordon. And they decided to have her basically become yeah, sort of Batman's network in a way. But without being, well, let's say have Batman interfere in their lives. Yeah, and of course Terry is absent from the issue for no explained reason. Oh, and by the way, this is actually one of two filler issues that came out during Dan Jorgen's run. The other is probably going to be printed in the next tray, which then featuring a basketball game. One of the most bizarre looking basketball games I've ever seen. As for this particular storyline, picks up like not long after the last storyline left off, with Bruce Wayne being alive and well, and of course him noticing changes. One of course is Terry wearing this costume. No, it's not the costume from the TV show. Nope, it's a completely different costume that he has worn in the past. Mm-hmm. Yep, it is a completely different costume, and also he. This costume sort of eats at him in a way, and it just uh, doesn't exactly agree with him. So, it ends up nearly killing him. Now, as for the whole name of the Riot's Demon, it's returning to League of Assassins, and also return of this character, who is from the TV show, by the way, and her name is Cabaret. Those of you who ever... Uh, Tidia probably remembers this character from the Batman Beyond TV show. Yeah, that's her right there. Making her first, I would say first post-series appearance, because one thing Dan Jurgens does do, he does confirm TV show is canon, in a way, will also mix it in with DC Universe, because they have Damien here, and he's now taken over from his, from his grandfather's role as the League of, as leader of the League of Assassins. Roz is officially dead. He's been dead for years. As what happened to Talia, never mentioned at all. Yeah, Telly is never brought up in here. Also, none of the are Batman villains. Oh, and also, they do confirm, yes, that was a Joker at the end of the last trade. Though the ending did basically do a great homage to a death in the family from the 80s. The Jim Sterling storyline. Which is a good storyline, despite its controversial, violent pen penultimate issue. Yeah. And plus, here's the thing. Damien's bodyguard is Ubal's son. Not kidding, it's his son. So, like, like father, like son, he's basically the bodyguard for one, one of the, uh, for somebody who's related, who's, who's basically the head of the demon. Which is interesting, though, the fact that is. This was actually a pretty good storyline, to say the least, and it was great to see Damien again, and he's an adult now. He's actually about the same height as Bruce now. I think, because Damien present day is currently 13, I think he's, since it's about, I would say he's probably around the age of 30. I'd probably say so. Bruce is probably probably in his 60s. That's my personal guess when it comes to it. But this is one really good storyline and great way to continue off right where the ending left off from the last storyline. And I'm going to give this book a 9.5 out of 10. It's a really good book. Say at least. Oh, who does the uh, filler issues? Yeah, the filler issue here is done by Steve Orlando. And Fatila Alaya, I think it's the pronounce of woman, the person's name. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave Johnson does the cover art. The other artist besides Bernard Chang is uh, Sonia Odom and Dexter Voss. Vinny's. Excuse me. I have no idea why in the world Dan Jurgen said to skip an issue for. If I may begin, I'll ask him about that. But this is good. Next up is a book I think a lot of people have been wanting to get my thoughts on this particular storyline, and that is Wrong Side. 
Here we go. Batman, Volume 4, The War of Jokes and Riddles. Written by Tom King. Artwork by Mikhail Janin. Collecting Batman, Volume 3, Issues 25 to 32. Yeah, this is one awesome storyline. And quite possibly by far, the one of the, possibly, it's probably candidate for the best storyline that Tom King has done so far. This has been, this was an epic storyline when it came out last year. And this is only just an eight part story. And this also featured like the first chronological appearance of Kite Man in the story. What's War Drugs and Riddles? It's a, it's a gang war between Joker and the Riddler. Riddler. Not kidding. Oh, and who's on their side? Yeah, they do show this off one particular page. If I can find it here. Yeah. On the Riddler's side, you're like, okay, that's interesting. And Joker's like, okay, that kind of makes sense for some of the characters. Now, on the side of... If I can find him here. If I can find the quick page. Also, in the storyline, if you wonder what costume... Batman is wearing. He is wearing from what looks like the Jim Lee costume. Yeah, he also wore this costume in the flashback for Wonder Woman, the Wonder Woman annual that came out for this current volume of the series. Mm -hmm. Let's see. On the Riddler's side, he's got Vector Zaz, the Scarecrow, Two Face, Killer Croc. Clayface, Deathstroke Determinator, Firefly, and Poison Ivy. Yeah, this is his group. Interesting lineup, I gotta say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, though he's also drawn by Kite Man as well, which, which is also an interesting thing. On this, on the Joker side, you got Clue Master, Man Bat, Deadshot, Mad Hatter, Tweety Tweedum, Mr. Freeze, Ventriloquist, and Scarface. And Solomon Grundy. Yep, this is Joker's team. It's a really unique team. I got handed to uh, Tom King for throwing a lot of these great Batman villains on both sides. Also, each and each issue is usually booked in the beginning and end by present day Bruce and Selina. Which I will spoil what happens at the end once I get to the end of this particular review. Also. The Joker does something really weird. First, he's shot at the beginning of the storyline by the Joker, and he does, and he basically carves a question, part of a question mark, into his chest. Yeah, I'm curious though. Does he still have this scar on his chest? He did this to himself after he got shot by the Joker. If I can give a good shot here, yeah, he did that himself. He has it in this storyline, but as for if he has after the storyline wraps up. I don't have any idea. Now, I've got to ask, why in the world is Solomon Grundy sometimes considered to be a Batman villain, even though he's an, he's an Alan Scott villain? No idea. Also, this is Kite Man's costume. It's a really good looking costume. I got to hand Mikhail Jenner for doing a great job with it. Oh, yeah, and the Joker has this thing where apparently he can't laugh because he's constantly frowning. Also, there is a, there is a version of Catwoman here, which she's wearing the Jim Bellin costume for some reason. Yeah, so apparently your first costume in this continuity is the Jim Valen costume. Excuse me. I do have a theory of why that she's wearing this here. Because DC released last year the Catwoman by Jim Valen trade. So in order to promote it, let's have Catwoman in a flashback wear the Jim Valen costume. Yeah. I don't have a big problem with it like some people did, but it's a nice looking costume. I mean, it's purple. Yeah, basically she does have long hair, though she does go to the uh, look that Darren Cook gave her in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, this is one epic storyline, and at the end of it, now at the end of, the, of issue 24, basically Batman proposed to Catwoman, and in this storyline... And this is something people have been waiting for eight issues. Basically, because of the fact this comic came out twice a month, we had to wait four months for an answer. Yes, we had to wait four months for the answer to the question that was asked at the end of issue 24. What does Catwoman say? She says yes. And that leads into the following storyline with Batman going to see Talia. Yep. Epic storyline. 9.75 out of 10. 
great. I highly recommend it. I especially people recommend it who also are fans of Tom King and Batman. Also, if you're a fan of Joker, Riddler, or any of the bad villains who open the storyline, pick it up. You would not regret picking up this epic of a storyline. Alright, that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which I think is going to be like one Batman trade and a Star Wars trade next episode. Yeah, but you'll find out what they are in the next episode. Okay? But until we see you all there, bye.